Hi guys, so I don't really do this, but I decided to do a video on something technical. It's something that I've been uh, working on, let's say, on a side project that I have. It's one of my test websites. It's actually a replacement for Skype. If you want, you can go check it out. I'm not going to refer to it here. I'm going to put a link in the description if you care to look at it. But uh, I'm not here to talk about that. I mostly want to talk about the lack, if you want to say, about some complete system to develop web apps. I know there are a lot of frameworks out there, a lot of uh, solutions, but there is always something you know that you have to put together or something that you have to add, something that you have to work on. So this is what I'm really going to focus on in this video here. I want to say how you put all those pieces together to get something, you know, working pretty good. So again, this is uh, my stuff and what I use is called Django. It's a Python programming language. It's a programming language. Uh, Django is actually the framework. The programming language is Python. Sorry about this. <laughs> uh, so let's get started. I know a lot of people use Django in different ways, you know, and again, this is not the only way. I'm just trying to shed some light here on how I did things and how I think. What I think is really missing is the bridging point of putting all that stuff together. So my side uh, right now was pretty anonymous. You know, you created a room. It didn't require any user management or anything like that. But, you know, the media, the social stuff, all those things, you know, require a user account these days. So. I had to naturally you know, transition my website from that to the media side. So this means, you know, uh, integrating into social stuff and all this good, the good things, you know, registering a user and, you know, sending a verification email. So the first component is, you know, that I used is the Django user ENA, E-N-A. What, does, what this does, it provides a simple registration form. It doesn't have any bells and whistles. It sends a registration verification email to the user, an automated email. Once they click on that link, their account is you know registered, and they can proceed from there. It has stuff like avatars, it supports changing passwords, and all that stuff. This is great out of the box. It works for if you want to just do that, but no one really just wants to do that, really, to be honest takes a lot more to it in a modern, if you want to say, website. So the first thing that I added into it was uh, the password check, which, you know, I, I leveraged another library called the Django Passwords. And what this does, it basically brings some password strength into it. Uh, so bridging those two, I was able to, you know, to do some validations, you know, like uh, have a minimum character limit, you know, check if the word is in a dictionary, uh, be able to specify, you know, what characters I want in the password or what combinations of letters and symbols. All that stuff was inside that library. I, I had to modify a little bit the form, the sign-up form, where you can, you know, subclass it. If you're familiar with subclassing in Django, it's pretty straightforward. You know, you basically take that form, extend the field that you want, and, you know, replace it with the one that you want. In particular, there were two password fields in this case, and I just had to replace the password, the character field that they use in the form with a password field, which basically is the Django password, and that gives a seamless integration to your form validation. So that's for the passwords. Another thing that I came across and I know didn't exist is uh, the CAPTCHA. CAPTCHA is like a big chapter in websites these days. You want to have a, some form of CAPTCHA or some way to block bots from registering a lot of users, you know, or users creating spam fake accounts. So the library that I leveraged for that was called the Django Simple Captcha. The good thing about it is that all you have to do is, you know, add the captcha field in your form. So I had to modify again the user and uh, view, you know, by subclassing it and add the captcha view. Once I added that, basically the is valid that's already get called gets called in the view, you know, checks for that and basically it lets you, you know, in a way, uh, validate if the CAPTCHA is correct or wrong and rejects the form. 
this blocks a lot of stuff from you know being created. So right now I have enhanced this user and a sign up form with two ways, you know, the password and the captcha, but this is still not enough, you know. These days, you know, everyone uses social stuff, social media, social media, you hear it everywhere. What I use for that is, and again, this is not the only one, there are two libraries out there that I think are very popular, it's the Django Social and the Django uh, Facebook. I only needed Facebook in this case, so I went with the Django Facebook, which brings a whole lot of dependencies like Celery and some other stuff which is good, you know, it's not mandatory to have Celery, but it's good to have it, you know, because when you're fetching details from a password profile, you wanna, you know, schedule this as a task and not run it in the web context. So it's good to enable Celery, I recommend it. I think I'm using it with RabbitMQ. <coughs> I'm sorry, there are different ways to do that. That's the one that I'm going with. Um, so, I use the Django Facebook. That was the trickiest part. The problem with this is that in the Django 1.6.2, they changed the user model. <coughs> I'm sorry about this. So if you want to change your user model, basically to point in your own, you have to define an auth user model, basically. The auth user model basically has to have some fields which are documented in the Django documentation, and I highly recommend you go through those. I think there's a required field and there's a username field. So building a custom profile, it's not as easy as the older versions. They're they have deprecated the, the functionality that older versions have. And you basically have to customize it on your own. I could give you more details if you're interested on that, you know, just message me. I don't really want to go in depth in this. But the tricky part is building your own user profile, your own user, you know, uh, model. Basically, in that user model, you want to inherit both the Facebook and the user Anna profile. So you can keep both Facebook and non Facebook users authenticating. And the other tricky part is extending the accounts, which is a standard URL in, used in, by both of them, extending it with both the Facebook and the non Facebook one. I know in the Django Facebook documentation, they're saying not to use the other one. But if you do that, parts of it was not going to work. They're basically saying if you're using user n or something like that, do not extend it. But do it. It's wrong. It's not going to work well. There are some uh, function callbacks that like auth logout or something like that. I can't remember exactly that are needed. So you definitely want to have two entries in your URLs. One for the accounts in Facebook and one for the accounts in user n. Once this is done, you're not quite there yet. <laughs> the, the thing is that most developers, uh, HTML5, CSS3, and jQuery developers these days, they want some form of standard you know, communication. While the Django is good, not everyone is a Django developer. So you don't want to entirely rely on forms. You want to provide some means through JSON, you know, and not only the web development part. If you want to, you know, extend the app to an iPad or an iPhone, you want to have some form of communication that's standardized. So for this, I used JSON and REST. I found a good library called the Django REST framework, which basically lets me do just that, you know. You extend your code, your views, basically to have a, you know, a post put get using a basic, essentially, you know, some way of JSON communication between your back end and your front ends, be it a web or an iPad or you know an iPhone. So bringing all those pieces together, you know, I was able to put together you know a website that had social and non-social user verification fairly fast. Uh, I know that's not might not be the ideal way for everyone. The screen just locked on me, sorry for a second. But uh, it does work. I've tested it extensively. You have to mess around a little bit with settings, you know, keep in mind the things that I mentioned, and I think you can get it there. Uh, I mean, having said that, there are some other things that helped me out in the development. I use a library called the Django Extensions, which basically extends the, the, the shell that you get, you know, to debug things. The, if you type minus the Py shell, you, they have an extended shell, and they have an extended web server, which gives you a nice way of Viewing variables basically drops you to a Python shell when you get an exception or an error. 
It has some cool features. So the Django extension is optional. You don't really have to have it, but be quite useful. And I think the the Django project will definitely benefit from that. I'm hoping that some Django developers take all those considerations, take all the things that I mentioned into consideration, and I think provide some way of having and bridging all those libraries together because when you actually build a modern website you really need all those components and if those are not there you know and you want simpler functionality then honestly it's not it's not really something that you, you that you would want to go with you know it's like you really want to have you know a capture you really want to have some password check strength you really want to have some social integration you want to have some easy way of you know communicating your Django app with uh, external factors using REST or JSON. All those are, you know, pretty standard in the industry these days and, you know, they're expected. Same with seller, you know, you want to have a task manager they're taking away the load from the main uh, process. You might want to offset all the tasks on a different server, you know. I mean, having said that, I'm going to do another video of how I implemented all that stuff into more and more details and how I extended it using the cloud. Because the truth is that, you know, you don't really want to rely on one web server or one, you know, database or whatever, or one audio server, whatever, depending on what your system is. Mine was a chatting thing, so I have different audio servers, you know, all had to register into a decentral in a decentralized way. Uh, that would be another video, though. This one is already very long. Well, I hope you find that interesting, you know, and good luck on your, and, you know, your future. That's with Django. Thank you.